more protection for the environment. So our next person is going to talk just about how cool nature is and how neat it is. But there's one, it's, it's a complicated topic. He's going to do a very good job about explaining something and just bringing more light to the situation. So Robin, if you come up here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's, it's pretty cool being here, standing in front of everybody of you. Um, before I'm actually going to start talking about my topic, I just want to take a moment just to say thank you to the people who actually made this entire event possible, because uh, I think that is very necessary. So to the event of KLU Things Big, very good job. You definitely deserved a round of applause. All right, that's enough. that's enough. Okay, we don't want to forget who is actually the stars here tonight. Um, okay, also great thanks to the audience to to show up today. I have a quick question for you. Who of you believes that life is tough sometimes? Just raise your hand, just to get like an image, a little higher so everybody can see and look around, look around. So actually, so many people here in this room raised their hands, agreeing, saying life is tough. Interestingly, let's keep that in mind. A couple months back, I was waiting at the train station here at Überseequartier, waiting for my train to arrive. As a fellow student came up to me and he asked me, hey Robin, how's life? And I was like, dude, life, life is tough right now. Next week, I got three presentations. I got one essay to hand in. Life is tough. And he stood there and he looked at me with a very charming smile and he said, no man, our lives are not tough. So I was like, okay, <laughs> whatever. But on my way home in the train, I thought about what he said to me and how he said it. And I figured I'm healthy, I'm safe, I have a lovely family. I have some very good friends who actually showed up today. I'm very grateful for that too. I have, I have basically everything I need and I enjoy great education at a very good university. And I have breakfast when I wake up. I have dinner before I go to sleep. So I asked myself the question again, what actually on earth gives me the right complaining about love, life, saying it was tough, not about love. There's nothing to complain about love. <laughs> Um, the answer, as you could imagine, was pretty simple. Nothing. Nothing, Emily. <laughs> so this is why I'm standing here on this day in front of everybody of you, because I want to make a difference. Ladies and gentlemen, dear professors, dear faculty, dear fellow students, and everybody else who decided to show up today, today I want to take you to an unforgettable journey to a very mysterious and precious place on Earth. Today, we are traveling deep into the tropical jungle of the Amazon rainforest. Oh yeah. The Amazon rainforest is over 55 million years old, and it truly is a place of beauty and wonder. And here's what it looks like. Amazing, right? So, the Amazon rainforest creates more than 20% of Earth's oxygen, is home to more than 30% of our planet species, and it covers more than 40% of, of South America. And the trees and the plants in South America, in the Amazon rainforest, are also known as the lungs of our planet. And this is because 
they truly are breathing organisms that store more than 90 billion tons of carbon dioxide in the trunks, in the roots, and in the soil. And the Amazon rainforest is home to more than 50,000 different plant and tree species, and some of which can actually grow up to a height of 80 meters, which is, by the way, higher than the Siege soil of Berlin, that is higher than the London Tower Bridge, and that is higher than the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. But also, the Amazon rainforest is also one of the greatest biodiversified places, ecosystems on our planet. In fact, it is so diversified that every three days we discover a new species. And the life itself in the Amazon rainforest is both brutal and beautiful. And this is why some creatures came up with certain what we call in biological terms symbiosis, which are basically agreements between two parties. So for example, we have the, maybe we can turn down the light for like one second, because it's a cool picture. And uh, So we have the Colombian tarantula and the dotted humming frog. The Colombian tarantula, the spider, is protecting the frog from outside predators and in return, the dog is protecting the spider's eggs from, for example, hungry ants or other insects. These special bonds, these, these special relationships, um, is something you find all along in the Amazon rainforest. And something else you find in the rainforest is the Amazon River. The Amazon River, um, it's a pity that we don't really see the pictures here. <laughs> Right, uh, okay, more attention for me then. Um, the Amazon River is the second largest and probably the mightiest river on our planet. In fact, it is so long that it stretches over 6,400 kilometers. To give you a better idea of how long that actually is, this is the same distance as going from New York in the United States to Milan in Italy. And it's also home to thousands of different species. Among others, we have something like uh, the green anaconda, we have piranhas, we have pink river dolphins who actually turn their skin even pinker, just like we humans are blushing red when we get nervous or excited. We also have alligators that have been around since the period of the dinosaurs. So this is a guy, Martin Streel, who actually swam through the entire Amazon River in 2017, in only 66 days. He's a Slovenian marathon swimmer, and finally this, this picture on the left was taken right before he started his journey, and I still couldn't really figure out why he was smiling, because it's quite a dangerous act to do that. Anyway, as maybe some of you already know, the Amazon rainforest is not just a home to thousands of different trees, plants, and animals, it is also a home to humans to people. Okay, this is in a different order right now. Um, I'm just going to continue like that. Um, as I said, it's also a place for humans. And unfortunately, I wanted to show you a picture of a tribe, one of the 200 tribes living in the Amazon rainforest. These are the people who are like running around nakedly, but truly are in living in total harmony with the nature. These are the people who believe that all the forests, the plants and the trees and the animals are all sharing a universal energy. Unfortunately, since the first contact was made with these people inside of the rainforest, one third of the 200 tribes, almost 70 tribes were wiped out because of Western diseases. So, as we have seen and learned through our journey already, the Amazon rainforest is not just an essential place for plants and animals and humans, but also that it is essential to our entire planet since it stores massive amounts of carbon dioxide. Uh, a rational person would probably say something like, we do everything possible to protect this place, right? We do everything possible to sustain this place, right? But unfortunately, we don't. We don't protect this place. In fact, this is a sad reality. Amy. 
Junction. I'm gonna go back and maybe do it one more time. Maybe the yeah. Every single day, we lose more than 140 different plant and animal species. Every single day. And logging, meaning cutting down and burning down the trees, mining and farming, are all responsible for free football fields to vanish every single minute. In the last 100 years, we have lost more than half of the Amazon rainforest. Meaning, if we don't stop this pace of destruction right now, in the next hundred years, in the next century, there will be no Amazon rainforest left. Or to put it in other words, something that, has, that is so special, so unique, that has been around for more than 55 million years on this planet, could be destroyed in only 200 years. So the question for today now, what can we do as individual people? Because if we were to lose the Amazon rainforest, the consequences would be disastrous and they could be felt over the entire planet. If we were to lose the Amazon rainforest, we also lose any chance we have in winning the battle against global climate change. So what can we do as individual people? Well, for starters, we can try to reduce the amount of paper we use. We can try to buy and use renewable energy products whenever we can. And last but not least, the most important point we can do is we should really, definitely, reconsider our beef consumption. Brazil is the largest producer and exporter of beef, covering a world beef demand of 20%. Last year, only last year, they cut down an area that is 100 size 100 times the size of Manhattan, only for pasture. Pasture is, means the animals we, we are eating and the food the animals are receiving. A size 100 times of Manhattan. When I did this research, and I, I've seen all these videos and these pictures, I actually had tears in my eyes. I don't feel ashamed to, to admit that. Anyway. Standing here today in front of you, preaching, wasn't really the purpose of my speech today. As I told you in the beginning, I really wanted to make a difference. But I can only make the difference with your help. So if you actually were to follow this link, it will bring you directly to the page, homepage of Oro Verde. Oro Verde could be translated in the green gold, is a social organization that fights for the protection of all tropical rainforests on our planet for over 30 years now. I know some people personally there. I know they are very reliable. I know they have great expertise. And I know that 83% of all the donations made are directly floating into local projects. Projects like preventing illegal logging from happening. Projects like giving um, animals shelter and also planting trees and they do so much more they do basically everything that needs to be done any amount you would donate if it's to if it's today or tomorrow or maybe in the next week would tremendously help to restore this unique and precious place to its former glory and maybe maybe in the future if we all work together we can make the life of all the inhabitants in the Amazon rainforest a little less tough. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Robin, for this very informational uh, presentation you gave here.